I don't know about you, but I am super excited about summer being here, finally. And in today's video, I wanna share with you a really fun floral tutorial that's going to take some of the fun and color that we've been waiting for um, and just bring that onto paper. All right, so I have my block of watercolor paper. Mine is from Bao Hong, also known as Academy watercolor paper. And I would recommend that you use a cold press paper. So it doesn't really matter what brand you're using, but cold press will be a lot easier to work with. In terms of composition, I'm gonna put some little dots or markings for where all the centers of my flowers are going to be. So I've got two dots on the top, one in the middle and two in the bottom, but you can lay out your flowers however you want to. I would keep them somewhat close together because they're gonna bunch up and you'll see in a little bit how that works. Out. So we're going to work on our first flower um, and we're going to create a petal that's going to be a somewhat irregular blobby, at lack of better words, shape that points towards the center of the flower. So that dot that we created at the beginning, that petal is going to get narrower as you get closer to that dot. Then, this is going to be super fun, we're going to pick a saturated color. So for me, it's going to be red, but if you want your bouquet to be blue or purple, you go with whatever punchiest, most saturated you can and start to add that to an area of the petal. And it doesn't matter what area of that petal it is, the color is going to bleed anyway. So we're going to let the watercolor kind of do its thing and move on to the next petal and repeat the same thing. So this flower is going to have five petals and each petal is going to have its own little personality. So wherever you want to insert insert and add that pop of color, that's up to you. But I would definitely recommend just giving it the variation and not overworking it. So right here, I'm just adding a little punch here and there and then moving on because the watercolor is going to do its thing and it's going to do all the heavy lifting for you, which is, in my opinion, amazing. Okay, so third petal. And um, one of the things that I really struggle with is trying to get the imperfection of petals because I'm such a perfectionist that sometimes like I'm trying so hard to get these petals to be perfect that like they don't even look real or natural anymore. So I kind of have to like squint or like, no joke, I have to like close my eyes sometimes <laughs> to try to mimic that like imperfection that you get from nature. So um, little secret, Margot paints with her eyes shut. All right, so now that we're getting to the bottom petals, here's where things get a little bit different. So we're gonna make these bottom petals a little bit wider and flatter, and that's gonna give them the illusion that they are, or that the flower is more three-dimensional, and those bottom petals are, are a little bit closer to you than the ones at the top. And just like the other petals, we're gonna create these hot spots where you've got a lot more saturation of color. And as you can see, as it starts to dry, like on the top petals, you can see it's starting to like, look like the light is hitting it and shimmering and reflecting off of those petals. And we really didn't do anything at all. We were just letting the paint do its thing. And that illusion kind of starts to crystallize as, you know, as, as the whole thing comes together. Oakley doakley, as, um, as Ned Flanders says. We are gonna let this dry um, a little bit, but I'm gonna start mixing up the color that's gonna go into the middle of that anemone. And I'm gonna take a, what is this, a violet and a complementary color. I'm just gonna try to get as dark as possible. I'm just mixing a whole bunch of colors together until I get something that is reminiscent of a black. I actually don't own or use black, and what I typically just do is mix complementary colors together to get as dark and as dense as possible, and that makes for a much more interesting interesting black than if I was taking one straight out of the tube. So now what we're going to do is we are going to start to dot the center of this flower. And I'm going to create sort of like a half crescent, not half crescent, a crescent shape. And right around that crescent shape, somewhat like these very, very tiny dots, um, kind of like creating like a dotty donut. <laughs> My mind always goes to food. And extending those dots into onto one side only. So don't go completely around the whole thing. I mean, unless you really want to. But stick to one side and let that dark color, that black, or that homemade black that is, bleed onto those petals, which will create a gorgeously expressive impression of that flower. I mean, look at how gorgeous that is. It's bleeding along. And we are really just letting the watercolors do their thing. I mean, why push it? Why try to control the situation when it's just doing it for you? Autopilot, as I like to call it. So now that we've done that, we're gonna repeat this process for the rest of the flowers. And in terms of the color scheme, I recommend, um, you know, if this is your first time doing florals and it's kind of intimidating to you, I would try to stick to a analogous color palette, which means 
If this sounds super jargony, don't worry about it. It's just basically colors that are adjacent to one another on the color wheel. So for red, that would be orange, or it would be, it would be pink, or um, a warm violet. So the colors in the same or similar color family will make for a nice unity of, of color and make it a lot easier to work with, especially, like I said, if you are a watercolor newbie. Now, I don't know if you caught what I just did here, but I allowed flower number two to touch the petals of flower number one, which caused them to bleed into one another, which I think is a wonderful effect. I'm also taking the opportunity here to make flower number two a bit different. So I'm choosing to put the gradations of color or those, you know, those pops and those accents of color in different places, which is making this flower look different, even though it's built pretty much the same way. Um, you know, having these, these variations makes it look like a completely different flower. So far so good. I'm loving the way that these look. And anemones are some of my favorite flowers because they're so colorful, they're so vibrant. And artists, let me know what your favorite flowers are and what your favorite flowers to paint are. And are they the same as your actual favorite flowers when you're going to you know, your local um, florist, bodega, wherever it is you live that you pick up flowers from? Back to this bouquet, we're gonna create flower number three, which is gonna be a bit different from the rest. So instead of all the petals being completely even and the same, the bottom side of the flower is going to form like a an arc. So using, you know, whether it's a flat brush that you're using like me or a round brush, just make sure that the bottom half of your flower is creating just a crescent or parentheses type shape. And that'll make the flower look like it's tilted up towards the top of your paper as opposed to facing the viewer. And that kind of creates like this feeling of, you know, obviously like when you have a bouquet, not all the flowers are all facing the same direction, right? So in this case, this flower is gonna be the one that's facing a little bit away. And we might tilt some other ones in, in different directions too. So what's great about these flowers is that generally speaking, they're all built pretty much the same way. There are just these very minor variations that happens to them that can either make them look really different from one another, just aesthetically from a color perspective, or just changing a couple of angles or a couple of things and, and line widths and brush strokes on certain areas of the flower can make it look like it's tilted in a different direction. Now coming back to the color, which is my favorite part, um, I am adding a little bit of violet. So, um, you know, just like how the second flower had those bursts that were emanating from the center of the flower, I'm going to do the same thing with the violet and have that in the middle of the flower. And, you know, that's just my personal decision. You do what Whatever it is you want to do, if you want it coming from the edges of the petals, if you want it coming, you know, if you want to make dots, I mean, hey, who said this has to look realistic, right? If you want to do polka dots or you want to make a modeled effect kind of like an exotic orchid or something, you know, go for it. What's the worst that could happen, right? So, okay, so I'm adding a bit more of my earthy homemade black to the center stamen portion of this third flower and allowing that to bleed however it will. I am at the mercy of my watercolors and that is how I like it because honestly that is one of the most amazing things about this medium is that I could paint this watercolor bouquet a hundred different times using the exact same paints and they would react completely differently every single time. And there's that element of discovery and adventure and um, you know I always say it's like alchemy. It's like this magic that just happens on the page and you're kind of at the mercy of what your watercolors want to do with you, not the other way around. Um, let me know artists if you agree with that or not or if I'm just kind of crazy. I'm a crazy watercolorist. <laughs> what can I say? So I'm going to speed through these last two flowers because they're going to be painted the exact same way as the first three. And if you are actually following me in real time and you want this to be slowed down, then there's a little trick for that, which is that you can look at the bottom of this video for the little cog symbol. And on playback speed, you can just click on I think it says like 0.25 or something or 0.50. So you can slow it down to be slow-mo so that it doesn't go too fast for you. A little trick that I discovered a couple of months ago. I don't know if anybody else knows this, but um, it's, it's really helpful if the video is going faster than what you had anticipated and you're following in real time.
Okay, so as you can see, this bottom flower has a little bit of that angle like we did in that middle flower. So right now we are done, for the most part, with our flower shapes. We're gonna add a little bit of detail to this later on. But we're gonna work on the stems now, and I'm gonna mix a green. I'm picking up a sap green, and here's my little secret. Mixing it with the red, or if you're not using red, if you're using blue for your flower, mix the green with a bit of your blue, and that will help to bring those colors closer together and make the whole thing look a little bit more professional. It's kind of like an old trick and um, you'll see that it makes such a huge difference in how your final piece looks. And in terms of your stems, what a lot of people do, and this is what I used to do at the beginning when I started painting flowers, is make, I used to make the stems into one continuous line and it kind of looked like a piece of spaghetti can, like was dropped into my painting. And I later found that when you break up your stems and don't make them into one continuous line, that it sort of tricks the viewer's eye into reading it as more three-dimensional and like it's coming in and out through various layers of foliage in your bouquet. Speaking of foliage, let's add some leaves and some filler elements, maybe a couple of buds. We'll try to fill out this bouquet. I mean, you could be done with this by and large and walk away, but I'm going to try to fill this out a bit more to make it look fuller and lusher and more, you know, like, like I said at the beginning of this video, I am excited about spring. So bring it on with the flowers. Let's make this explode. And here you can see, even in the leaves, you know, because I added the red, it is making it kind of tie into the centers of those flowers and makes it come together in a way that is way more considered. I mean, I think to me at least, the devil is in the details. And I just love being able to share what I know with you guys because I think that these little tricks, these little things that you know, could easily be overlooked can really help take it to the next level. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush off and get off my soapbox while I'm at it. And we are going to create some more filler areas in this bouquet because like I said before, we're gonna make this explode. And um, one thing that's kind of interesting about bouquets in general is that, you know, if you really look at them, most of the time, all the flowers are at various stages of blooming and that will be the case for this as well. So I'm gonna create some buds that have not yet opened and I think it's just really cute and very easy, honestly, just plop a little blob in there and call it a closed bud. So we're gonna repeat that a couple of times, again, making some variations here and there just to keep things interesting and a bit more natural too while we're at it. Now, depending on your specific arrangement, how your bouquet is laid out, where your flowers are, yours might look a little bit different to mine. So I'm just looking for areas in which I just wanna fill it out. And so the ones or the flowers um, that I'm adding a little bit later on, I'm not going into as much detail with them as I did the focal flowers in the front. So you'll see that the one here that I'm doing in the background, I'm just gonna leave somewhat blurry and not go into too much detail for that one. It's gonna make it also feel like it's a bit further away than the flowers in the front. So yeah, like I said, you know, fill in wherever you see some negative space where you want to add a bit more punch, a bit more color, and to fill out your own bouquet. And I'm having so much fun with these watercolor washes at the moment, with these like gradations of color. And um, I'm actually using a new palette that I just put together from a brand that I recently just fell in love with. The brand is called Roman Schmall, and I actually have a video with me unboxing this new watercolor set. And um, spoiler alert, my unboxings are very colorful and I get really, really excited about paints and about color in general. So if you haven't seen that, and if you're interested in trying out a new brand or if you're on the lookout for a really great quality watercolor set, I would really recommend watching that video. I'm gonna link it in the card right here so that you can check it out if you are interested. So let's keep oof, these little washes here and there. Oof, I'm just loving this right now. And just notice how those, those petals in the background are just like these very rough indications that flowers are there, but you really don't have to go in there and like slave over every single aspect and every single detail to get the impression that those those flowers are there in the background. Speaking of details though, let's add one more layer to finalize this. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna reach back for my warm black mixture and add in the stamens of these anemones. And for the stamens, I'm keeping it very, very light, nearly like eyelashes in the center of each flower. And for me, I kinda like the look of it being somewhat gestural and expressive, so I'm not going 
the entire 360 degree um, around the entire stamen or the middle of the flower. I'm just choosing one side to focus on to bring in that detail and leaving the rest um, as is. And it's really funny how your eyes can kind of fill in the blanks for what's not even there. And I think it's really elegant sometimes to pull back and see how these stylistic choices can make your artwork even more impactful sometimes. And I kind of compare it to like having a conversation with somebody and you're having a conversation with your viewer. And sometimes it's nice to leave moments of silence or moments to just pause, take a breath and let that thought or that idea sink in. And it's really very much the same thing with um, with artwork you know you are having a conversation with a viewer and allowing them the opportunity to project their own feelings and their own however they want to fill in the blanks for the art piece that you're showing to them and of course I'm saying this after like giving like a long 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 monologue <laughs> like talking to myself but I think you know what I mean nobody likes a one-sided conversation I think we want to give our viewer the opportunity to respond in their own albeit silent way all right, artists, we are nearly done. There is just one last detail that I want to add in here. Give it that finishing touch. Again, getting it to be a bit more professional. Grab your round brush, and we are just going to outline with a very simple brush stroke on some of the petals, only very selectively. So we're not going through every single petal for this. We're going to choose maybe one, maybe two, an edge here or there on some of the petals, and that'll provide the visual effect of there being a very subtle fold on some of these petals, which I think is lovely and makes them look like they're three-dimensional, like they're opening up and flowering in preparation for spring. Now finish it up however you see fit. If you want to add some more buds here or there, some more leaves, this is really your time to add whatever elements you want to add to your painting. And when you're happy with it, don't forget to sign it. Let's acknowledge the time you took out of your day to learn, to grow, to challenge yourself, and let's celebrate that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if anything, you know, whether you got a nice piece out of it or not, doesn't matter. I hope you had fun during this tutorial because that's what we're all here for, right? This is why we even own art supplies and do what we do to begin with because it's not about getting the best piece. It's about having fun and showing up every time. And um, you know, over time you will improve and, um, and that's what it's all about. As always, thank you so much for watching and for joining me on these art videos and I will see you next time. Thank you.